Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. Today, we're going to be discussing the latest developments for the boycott, divest, and sanction campaign coming out of Israel. Joining us today is Shir Hever. He's an economist studying the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories for the Alternative Information Center, a joint Palestinian-Israeli organization dedicated to publishing alternative information and analysis. Thank you for joining us. So Shir, can you tell us about this major conference that was just held last week in Israel? This conference was organized by the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, it's called the Global Forum for Combating Antisemitism. It took place between uh, May 28th and May 30th. Uh, and this is a very uh, interesting development for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Israel because uh, the ministry is uh, very uh, concerned about the kind of uh, criticism that is uh, growing around the world uh, uh, regarding Israel, the uh, apartheid system, the abuse of Palestinian human rights, uh, the mass uh, um, use of violence, against uh, innocent civilians. Um, and, and that is, of course, something that is uh, being manifested also with the boycott movement, the Boycott Divestment Sanction Mo Movement, or BDS. And this conference um, was supposed to be about something else. It was supposed to be about anti-Semitism. Uh, now, uh, usually the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs, at least in the past uh, uh, several years, tried to make it very clear that they don't accuse everyone who uh, criticizes Israel of anti-Semitism. Because this sort of argument uh, tends to back fire. Uh, most of the people who, who express such criticism against Israel on basis of, of uh, uh, Israel's violations of human rights are people who are defenders of human rights and would also defend the rights of Jews uh, uh, against attacks based on uh, their race or religion. Basically, they're saying that uh, those who criticize Israel, those who accuse Israel of crimes, uh, are in fact anti-Semites. Uh, so this is, a, 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 I think in, in many ways it shows that the Israeli uh, ministry is running out of excuses, run of, running out of ideas. Uh, this was a very high-level conference. Many very important speakers were invited. The Israeli Prime Minister, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, gave the opening speech. And in the speech, he said uh, that uh, there are three vilifications. And he listed those three. He said, the first one was that Israel is accused of committing war crimes. The second one, Israel is accused of not wanting peace. And the third one, Israel is guilty of violating the human rights of Palestinians. So these three accusations are not vilifications at all. In fact, they are uh, well-documented and well-proven accusations based on international uh, organizations, uh, as well as on many Israeli organizations that say the very same thing. Uh, I think most, most Israelis would actually agree that the Israeli government is not really interested in peace, uh, and uh, uh, yet they continue to vote for it. Uh, the fact that the Israeli army committed war crimes has been uh, well-established by, uh, for example, the Goldstone Commission, which was actually headed by a Jewish Zionist. The fact that Israel is guilty of violating uh, human rights is even periodically repeated by the uh, U.S. Uh, Department of State. It completely undermines the entire meaning of the word anti-Semitic. Uh, and that's something very concerning because uh, um, there are, of course, uh, uh, still in the world people who hate Jews just for being Jews. There are still anti-Semites. Um, but uh, these anti-Semites are now completely confused and obfuscated uh, with legitimacy, uh, legitimate criticism of Israel. What we see basically is that Israel is so desperate because of the decline of its international legitimacy, because uh, the international media is reporting uh, the crimes committed by Israel, that they are willing to drag with them Jews, wherever they may be, and to allow these Jews to be uh, unprotected from real kinds of anti-Semitism, uh, just so that they could uh, have yet another weapon or another s sort of uh, a threat mechanism that they can use against those who would criticize them. Now, Shir, um, a lot of the presentations and documents made at this conference have now been made public. What do you think are the most interesting um, points or, or arguments coming out of this conference, particularly concerning um, what Israel is to do about this growing Palestinian solidarity and BDS movement. If you actually go into the contents of this conference, you see that it's uh, in many ways a very empty conference. There is not that much interesting content in it. Uh, an interesting document, although it's interesting mainly because of what it doesn't include, uh, and that is a, a document about uh, online anti-Semitism, uh, which actually uh, talks about various uh, home pages or Facebook uh, uh, profiles which have anti-Semitic contents in them. 
um, well, I don't think it's very surprising that such things exist on the web, but the fact that uh, it takes such a central place in a conference hosted by the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs in a way shows that they really don't have much content uh, to talk about. But when it comes to strategy, when it comes to how they're going to uh, deal and act uh, uh, regarding anti-Semitism, suddenly the uh, target changes. And instead of targeting anti-Semitism, they start to target the BDS movement. The Israeli strategy on dealing with BDS, a boycott divestment sanctions, um, is, is uh, a threefold. Uh, it has three layers. One of the layers is about quantity rather than quality. That means uh, that they're u- investing large amounts of money. The uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs has recently uh, dedicated $6 million uh, for, uh, in budget to uh, fund various organizations. Uh, they're called GONGOs, uh, which is government organizations, non-government organizations, or GONGO, uh, which means organizations that pretend to be civil society organizations but are actually funded by a government, uh, which would uh, promote Israel's message. They're uh, paying people to write talkbacks uh, in, in websites and, and news uh, um, uh, sites uh, to promote Israel's message. So they're trying to fill the web with their content. I think it's very easy for anyone to go into, to do a search. And if you do a search on uh, uh, various topics that are controversial, you will find a lot of pro-Zionist content because this is paid content. Uh, the second layer of strategy used by, uh, that, that was promoted in this conference and promoted by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is to change the subject. That means uh, that instead of talking about the occupation, instead of talking about apartheid, about the rights of Palestinians uh, in, under Israeli law and so on, which is, of course, a topic that would embarrass uh, Israeli, pro-Israeli speakers very much, uh, they say, let's change the topic and talk about things like Israeli technology. So as if, uh, if Israel has very advanced technology, that somehow uh, would convince people not to boycott Israel or not to uh, uh, make Israel accountable for its crimes. Uh, this is something that we've seen quite a lot, uh, even when uh, Stephen Hawking decided to cancel his visit uh, to Israel as an act of protest. Uh, the argument that was made against him, that he's using a chip that was produced in Israel. And because of that, uh, he's been a hypocrite and he shouldn't boycott Israel. Um, so uh, uh, changing the subject is, is a strategy that has been recommended to the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs by marketing specialists that got a lot of money from the ministry to promote their strategy. And the ministry has wholeheartedly adopted this policy. Uh, if you go into uh, websites of various Israeli embassies around the world, you will see that their news release talk about uh, Israeli technological innovation all the time, and they're not even trying to engage in a discussion about the peace process, about Palestinian rights, about uh, um, the occupation, and so on. So the third level that is promoted by this conference and uh, also by the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs is intimidation, uh, basically to threaten uh, Palis- uh, to threaten pro-Palestinian activists or BDS activists with some kind of retaliation or um, a action by the Israeli uh, army or the Israeli Mossad. The Israeli military has uh, created a new unit to track uh, BDS activists online and their activities. And the Mossad is also vowed to to become uh, active in uh, tracking activists uh, who criticize Israel. And the point in this is is to intimidate activists and try to deter them from from getting involved, uh, building on on the prestige of the Israeli intelligence as uh, very effective and very violent. I don't think it's very likely that the Mossad is going to try to assassinate BDS, BDS activists or to directly harm them, because, of course, this policy will will backfire and only make the criticism against Israel more powerful. But um, they're hoping that just by making the threat, they can deter people uh, from from uh, making any criticism whatsoever. And I think it's very interesting that they're making that, that sort of threat against activists at the same time that their argument is uh, we are going to try to... Uh, Israel, Israel is a democracy. Israel uh, has freedom of speech. Well, it's freedom of speech, but if you criticize Israel, uh, then there's a military unit that's going to track you and... and uh, follow what you say. What's most interesting about this is uh, that uh, we have all these arguments that are, these three arguments that are made by this conference, uh, and we see them all the time in the media. It's called by uh, Israeli uh, speakers, uh, Hasbara. Hasbara means explanation. Uh, And uh, they repeat these three strategies, which are a quantity over quality, changing the subject and talking about technology instead of the occupation, and intimidation, threatening those people who criticize Israel. But there's a fourth one, 
that we don't see. And the fourth one is, is what we would expect to see, which is Israel trying to argue that their policies are right. We don't see the Israeli government trying to say we have a right to occupy these territories or uh, Palestinians um, are actually treated fairly by the Israeli government uh, because they know this argument doesn't fly. They know that nobody will, will buy it. The, the, the facts are, are extremely clear against them. And more than anything, this attests to the uh, growth and the strengthening of the BDS movement. So, Sheer, for BDS and Palestinian solidarity activists around the world, what lessons can they take out of this conference? First of all, uh, the fact that this conference even took place, the fact that the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs is reverting to strategies that they've abandoned because they've proven unuseful, shows that the movement is gaining momentum and is becoming stronger. And, they, and, and I think activists should be heartened by this. Second, I would say uh, it's very important for activists not to be intimidated because, of course, if they allow themselves to be intimidated, if they allow this kind of argument to work, then uh, uh, this is exactly what emboldens the Israeli government to pursue more violent action, and not just against Palestinians, but also against international activists. And we should be very clear that this is something that will not deter us. Uh, and the third point, and I think maybe the most important point, is that we should not fall into the trap which the Israeli uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs is trying to lay for us, which by which criticizing Israel means criticizing Jews, meaning we should not become anti-Semites. Uh, and, and that is something that we, is very clearly defined uh, in the BDS movement. And the call for BDS says very clearly we, we refuse to cooperate with any organization or, or individual that is racist or anti-Semite. This is not part of the movement, and we, we refuse to get assistance even from organizations like that. Uh, and, and they're right in doing so. They're very right in doing so because uh, the Israeli government has shown that it, it's willing to sacrifice Jews around the world and, and their safety in the name of protecting Israeli interests. And in our criticism against Israel and, and Zionism and Israeli policies, uh, we should, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, not uh, go uh, into that a trap that is laid for us in which we also accuse Jews as if they have some kind of responsibility for this. Sheer Hever, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jessa, very much. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.